Hi, this is Daniel from RMC Skunk Works. Welcome to another episode of Tales from the Wood Pussy Lounge. In this video, I wanted to discuss with you some of the dynamics that occur between directors and composers. And I hope this can help you navigate some of those dynamics if you're a composer or a director. And so I'm just gonna really keep it simple, just some broad strokes, maybe this can help you out. Uh, and if you're interested, I can do another video maybe going into a little bit more detail, but I think these things are gonna be helpful to keep in mind. Okay, so I think the best way to put this is just in a series of do's and don'ts, and hopefully that'll be concise and easy to digest. I would say you've got to try to embrace different direction than maybe what you were originally thought of. Uh, some of my most rewarding experiences as a composer have been when I started one way with a project, we went over it and the director suggested that we completely change things around, uh, could have been in a small way or in a large way, maybe just a, a section needed to be changed or uh, maybe a complete uh, revisiting of, of a composition. and. Uh, you know, the thing is that as composers, I guess as artists of any kind, we can often get a little bit too close uh, to the project uh, and you can't really see the whole picture. Uh, and of course, that's why the director is there uh, to kind of help everybody along into a unified uh, vision of what the project is supposed to be. Um, but, you know, keep in mind that Sometimes we don't always have the best ideas to start with. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's I've had some incredibly rewarding experiences with good directors that have changed my, my own vision for my own compositions. Uh, and I've often been pleasantly surprised and I think the project benefited from that. So on the flip side of that first do, and hopefully it's, well, it is contradictory, is that you gotta know when you're wasting your time as well. Uh, and the director needs to know that too. So it's up to both you, the composer, and you, the director, to decide and kind of come down hard on yourselves and make the decision, okay, we change things, maybe this direction isn't going the way we wanted it to. You've got to know when you're wasting your time. And of course, in, uh, in projects in the music industry, time is almost always very, very precious. Often we don't get enough time to do anything really properly. Uh, well, I shouldn't say properly. You have to do it properly, but you're given a very limited amount of time to do anything. So yeah, it's, it's important as the composer to stick up for yourself and say, well, I don't think this is working. Uh, and then you're going to have to negotiate with the director. Um, and of course the director, you have to manage your time and your, your team's time properly. So uh, you don't end up wasting anybody's time. This is difficult. I mean, this is, this is what you gain. Being able to do that aspect of things properly is, uh, I think you can only get that through experience. Uh, so to uh, the don't here is don't waste your time. Um, it's, it's a very touchy, uh, skill to learn. Okay. Another thing that you really need to do is get good at interpreting creative briefs. And this is a very interesting facet, interesting part of being a commercial composer. One composer might be one of a dozen composers on a project, especially for commercials. And what's given to you is a creative brief that gives a rundown of uh, the direction that the ad agency or the, uh, the production team wants you to go. And these can be very clear sometimes and also really unusual sometimes. Uh, it's, it's definitely open to interpretation and you have to really think it through what people mean when they say something <laughs> in a creative brief. I can think of an example myself, uh, where I had to do a commercial and the direction, one of the direction, 
one of the uh, qualifiers for the music in the creative brief was it needed to be classy. Uh, classy, I mean, that could mean a lot of different things. Uh, and I struggled with that a little bit. And when I went back for clarification, they just said that it needs to be classy. So this brings me to another point here is that sometimes the people giving you direction don't even know what they want. And they could say something like, we want a fresh sounding new, uh, new style in, in this uh, composition for this commercial. Almost everybody wants their, their product to be fresh, right? Um, and they say that, but it really doesn't mean make something completely new. It, <laughs> it often means just do a copy of, of something, of some style that uh, is, is not fresh. Um, so I can, yeah, it, it's, it's tricky. You, you have to have some references in mind. So getting, getting good at interpreting creative briefs is, is uh, again, one of those things that, that comes from experience. Um, but that is definitely a do. It's a must. You need to learn to interpret these briefs. And again, yeah, it's experience that, that, that really pays off there. Okay, so this uh, last point brings us to our second don't for composers, which is don't be afraid to ask questions, ask for clarification. Uh, I think looking back uh, on the point I made about the music needing to be classy sounding. Maybe where I went wrong was that I didn't try to get a rephrasing of that statement. Uh, I, you know, again, that classy could mean so many different things in so many contexts. Um, I, I should have asked more questions there. And, uh, you know, you'll get creative direction that can be very confusing especially if it's coming from people who don't know much about music. And that's a lot of people uh, in, in production. Um, yeah, it, it's, you've, gotta, you've got to learn how to phrase your questions so that they're going to be effective. So don't be afraid to ask. Don't assume anything. Uh, you need to ask questions, get clarification. And uh, the best thing to do is try to get somebody on the phone uh, to try to talk it out because a phone conversation has a very different flow and a very different dynamic than an email conversation. Uh, so again, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for rephrasing, restating of, of direction. Very, very important. So now the next part here is going to be for you directors out there. Uh, and I think the first do is pretty, pretty self-explanatory is that you've got to learn as much as you can about music if you're going to be working with musicians. I should say if you're going to be working effectively with musicians and composers. Uh, you, you need to get an understanding of uh, the language lingo terminology uh, that's, that's used in composition. Um, it, it's... I mean, it's just a given. I mean, that one, this is the most obvious thing is, is learn as much as you can about music. And if learning about music is a challenge for you, then learn as much as you can about people doing the music that you are directing others to do. So if you have a certain sound in mind, uh, maybe you're not, you don't have a high musical aptitude, if you can say, oh, well, you know, take a listen to this other composer or this other band. Uh, I really love their sound. Um, and if you can learn a little bit about them, that's going to help you direct the uh, composer or the musicians you have involved in your project. That's, that's huge. It's a, it's a must. So this takes us directly into the first don't for directors, which is don't let your knowledge of music take you into this uncanny valley of knowing enough to <laughs> say things that sound smart and that sound like they could help, 
but in fact, they are completely useless. I can think of one example uh, where I was doing a commercial for a video game and the director clearly knew, he clearly knew quite a bit about music, but it was not, he wasn't an expert and he was giving us direction that <laughs> really just confused everybody. I think he might have just wanted to sound smart. Uh, he was probably an amateur musician himself, um, but it just made the whole crew, the whole team of composers on this project, uh, it made us very frustrated. Um, so you have to have some self-awareness here. You, you don't, you don't want to go into that uncanny valley where you sound like your direction is going through a translator. Like there's information there that is probably useful, uh, but it's coming out uh, as ineffective. And if you are there, let's say you're an amateur musician or even, um, you know, almost maybe a perfect, yeah, maybe you're a professional musician. The most important thing you can do, regardless of your level of uh, musical knowledge or musical expertise, is uh, be able to explain your vision to your musicians, your composer, be able to explain it as if you were explaining it to a child. Now, that's, an off that's often a, a very effective way to kind of burn off all of the uh, useless crap <laughs> in, in your direction because you know it's not necessarily assuming, you're not making the presumption that your composers childish uh, or that your vision is childish it's just boiling it down to the most essential direction is a good way to clarify uh, and get rid of any of these extraneous or confusing bits and I've found that the directors who need to do that the most are the ones that know enough about music to be dangerous right so that's a it's a don't don't be that guy that knows some about music, knows something about music, but is not using that knowledge effectively. Uh, so this is this is about self-awareness here for yourself. Um, yeah, if you find if you find that you're a director and you're in that position, boil things down to the simplest explanation possible. That is very effective, and then go from there. So the second do for directors is to be passionate about what you're doing. Be passionate about your vision and be passionate about your direction. Uh, your team, your composers and your musicians, they will pick up on that and it will inspire them. That is incredibly satisfying for me as a composer to uh, be motivated by a director who is really into his project. Uh, it really brings out the best in your team. And I think that's a pretty easy thing to do. <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're involved in the entertainment industry in some way, you are usually going to be passionate about, about it. It's just too challenging to stick with it if you don't have that passion. But uh, that, I find, just, just that passion alone is often enough to motivate your composer to, to do his best. So the last thing that you should not do uh, as a director, when you're working with a composer, do not micromanage. This can be utterly demoralizing for a composer uh, to have a director telling him, <laughs> telling the composer where every note should go. And I've been in that position as a composer. I've had directors hanging over my shoulder, pointing to the computer screen, literally saying, no, this note go here, this note goes there, this note goes there. Uh, the one example I can think of, the person was not a musician. Uh, I, I don't know what the deal was with that. Now, I actually had to have a talk with that director and, and we did get a good result at the end. This was a long time ago. Um, but that can that type of micromanagement, it's it can be humiliating for your composer and your musicians, it's it's a no-no. Uh, and I know this is kind of the flip side of the last point I made about passion. Man, if you wanna make your composer really frustrated and 
risk having the music in your project sound frustrated and sound forced, you know, avoid the micromanagement. Let the artists that you choose do their work. And if it's not working, then possibly as a director, you might have chosen the wrong people. Um, so there's there's compromise there. Uh, often, you know, if, if I think if these points are just followed, um, the result can come out pretty good if you're working with professionals. But you know, it, it could be a challenge. So I wanted to wrap up this video with a couple of real world examples uh, in my experience. Of course, everything that I was talking about here uh, is super broad strokes uh, stuff. This is like uh, really the view from 10,000 feet, the, the getting a good dynamic between a composer and a director is something that happens just from experience. And, you know, it, it, even some of the, the most experienced and uh, highly regarded directors and composers can have their own challenges. So. You know, these are just things to keep in mind as you're working. But for real world examples, first one I wanted to give was, uh, this is a, you know, in line with the things that directors should not be doing. I, I did a project several years ago, I think it was over 10 years ago at this point. Uh, I was making an album of, of uh, TV dra crime drama music. And the company that I shall not name uh, hired me to create, I think it was about 15 tracks for this album. They were going to license these tracks for TV crime dramas. Uh, they really liked some examples that I had done uh, previous to working with them. Uh, they loved it and they wanted me to do music just like that, just so they can have it in their library. Uh, then when I got started with the project, the company sent someone to sit next to me the entire time I was composing. They, they literally sat right here next to me uh, as I was writing and did all of those things that I described not to do. Uh, this was, I think, a month long project uh, of that micromanagement of, uh, you know, the, the director not <laughs> knowing enough, uh, knowing enough about music, but not enough to be effective. And they didn't just let me do what I was doing. <laughs> what they, they didn't just let me create the music that they already liked. It was a strange situation and it was a huge waste of time for everybody. Man, that was, that was a bizarre experience. And I'm glad that that's in the distant past. Um, on the flip side of that, a recent project I did with the person I shall name, uh, Tal Peleg, uh, an animator and cinematics director for Bioware, currently at Bioware. Uh, he had a short animated film called uh, Dante's Redemption, and I did the original soundtrack for that. Um, that. That project was an amazing experience for me. Tal did everything right, everything right, and there were times when it was very challenging to follow his direction, but he followed the tips that I am giving in this video. I didn't have to say these things to him. He's just naturally a good director. And of course he has a lot of experience. Um, but you know, we had to do complete rewrites of, of, uh, of whole sections of some of these compositions. And I wanted to do it because he inspired me. He let me do my thing. But the collaboration, uh, the collaboration between me and him was so good, I think we got one of uh, the best compositions that, that I've put out. Uh, so, you know, it, it can be, it can go either way, uh, depending on who, who's working together. But I think if you follow the tips that I've given, uh, well, hopefully you'll have a good result. And no matter what, it'll be a learning experience. And uh, hopefully this video has helped you uh, on that on that journey. And by all means, let me know what you want me to talk about. Uh, I'm happy to share any of my experiences and I'm happy to, to get some of my colleagues to share some of their experiences. And 
of course, check out our website, www.rmcskunkworks.com, rmcskunkworks.com. Uh, you can listen to my music there. You can listen to my colleagues' music, uh, and, and you, can, you can see what we're all about. Please like and subscribe so you'll see when we get uh, new videos up and share this with your friends. And again, I'm happy to talk about anything uh, in the music industry or the entertainment industry. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.